Hi, I'm Susan and with my husband Ashley and my good friend Brian, we carried out an experiment looking at dyeing with weld on wool. This was about 10 years ago and it's great to be able to share it with you here. So we were looking at weld, which gives a great colour fast yellow. It was a member of the Grande Tente, the medieval guilds approved of it. It produces two types of yellow, we've noticed, and we weren't always able to get the bright zingy electric acid yellow, which is so good for over dyeing. So we wanted to explore why that was. We're none of us chemists, and all we can really do is look at these chemical structures in the textbooks. This is The Colourful Past by Hefenk de Graaff, which is a great book. And the majority of the dye in weld is luteolin, a flavone. But a very similar molecule, which there is a little of in weld, is apigenin, which is the one on the right. And that, interestingly, is a bit more soluble above 70 degrees C. And also, I believe, it has a slightly different colour tone, as the dye in dyer's chamomile, I've been led to believe, is mostly apigenin. So I have no idea whether the the secondary dye in weld is having an effect on the colour or not, but I am curious about it. So our aims for the experiment, which processes favour the acid versus the straw yellows? And does cream of tartar matter? Most recipes for adjective dyes like weld where you need a mordant also recommend using an assistant and cream of tartar is the most commonly used one. We surveyed a range of die craft books and you can see there's a huge range of proportions of alum and cream of tartar recommended. These, these graphs are the percentage of weight to fibre to be dyed. Interestingly, the third recipe from the right hand side in 2007, there's one recipe there that recommends no cream of tartar and that was Jenny Dean, who's a very well respected dyer. And we were curious to find out what the results are when you don't use any compared to using cream of tartar. Also, there are different types of cream of tartar. I was previously buying cream of tartar in the form of a, a colourless crystal from a British supplier called PM Woolcraft. Sadly, they're no longer in business, and um, instead, I've started to use baking cream of tartar bought from a shop. I wanted to know if they're the same. I haven't got time here to talk about all the different things we explored in the experiment, but the great thing is that Brian, our friend, is a professional statistician and his specialism is assisting scientists in refining their chemical processes. So with his advice we decided to do a full factorial experiment, so we compared every permutation of all of these different variables in the mordanting and the dye extraction stages and also in the dye bath and then for completion we also left half the samples in the sun for three months to look at fading. So as I say I'm not going to go into the detail of that here but just to say we ended up with 384 samples which was rather a lot. However I will talk about the most interesting results here which are the mordanting results. The next slide shows the poster called Experimenting with Weld on Wool, which I'm sure you can't read from this screen, but in the kiosk in the BioDyes conference, you will be able to go to the back of the kiosk, click on the screen, and then I believe you can download this file, but you can certainly read it in great detail. Most of the results were what you would expect, but the benefit of a factorial experiment is that you can look for interactions. So the dependent variable, what was it we were measuring? We looked at the intensity of the colour that resulted from the, the different conditions and we didn't have any specialist equipment to measure that colour. We simply used three different people's judgments by eye and then we took an average of their uh, judgments. We asked um, them to judge 48 samples. Brian used his statistics to select a subset that would give us still a very good picture of what was going on. 
if you want to contact Brian to find out more about how he did that, please get in touch with me and I can let you contact him. So we had 48 samples, we wrapped them. Uh, the photograph here is not easy to see the colour, but you can see how we prepared the samples. They were hand spun yarn, so the weights were the same in each sample, but the thicknesses varied, hence the slightly different sizes of the little bits of wrap. We took each of the 48 and put them in order from the palest to the deepest, not caring what the type of colour was, just comparing the intensity. We achieved a rank then for each person and took the average of those, which gave us an average rank. And here with this graph, the y-axis, the vertical axis, is that number. It's the average rank. So the higher the number, the deeper the colour of the sample. And we're comparing two conditions in the mordanting, either 5% of alum or 15%. And you can see on the left hand side that at low alum, 5% alum, adding cream of tartar, didn't matter much which one, made only a very tiny difference to the depth of colour. Whereas at higher alum, the cream of tartar made a big difference, produced deeper colours, and the dyer's cream of tartar produced a deeper colour than the baking cream of tartar. So I think that's a useful thing to know about. And if you're working with an intermediate value of alum, maybe 10%, which is what I prefer to use, then uh, it still will make a difference if there's a linear relationship between these in this interaction. But we also wanted to look at the quality of the colour, the lemon or acid shades compared to the straw shades. This photograph just attempts to show you the quality difference, although there is an intensity difference here too. But this chart uh, is a frequency chart, really, showing every single one of the 48 samples and whether they fell into the straw category or the acid category. So we just basically took the 48 samples, put them in two categories, um, and then this is the chart of how those uh, colour qualities fell out in, 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 in terms of these different, these different conditions in which the yarns were produced. So we have 12 rows here and the bottom six, the bottom half of the chart, is how the acid straw turned out in high temperature dye baths. That's 195 Fahrenheit or 90 degrees C. So a good strong simmer. And we can see there's a lot more of the straw colour turning up when the temperature is high in the dye bath, which is useful to know. So there are various books that say keep the temperature low if you want to get the bright colours. This would confirm that. Interestingly, the condition which is fifth up from the bottom or second one down from the middle of the table is the, is the baking cream of tartar at 90 degrees, 5% alum. Every single sample there was a straw colour. Then if you look in the top half of the chart, on the whole, there's more of the acid tones here. And this is the lower temperature dye bath, 70 degrees C or 160 Fahrenheit. But again, we, we see some other straw colours popping in. And we were interested to see where did that happen. Dyer's cream of tartar in both the 5 and 15% conditions were always acid, which again, I think, is a vote in favour of using um, the purest cream of tartar you can find. But what I find fascinating is that at 15% alum, which is the fourth row down, there was no cream of tartar at all and every single sample was a lovely bright acid colour. So Jenny Dean's recommendation that if you can't get Dyer's cream of tartar, it's better not to use any, does seem to be borne out by these results. And certainly at low alum, 5% alum, the second row down, every single sample with baking cream of tartar was a straw colour. So just um, to add a little bit of insight into what might be going on at the low alum concentrations, this slide shows uh, the samples before they were dyed. And we have on the right hand side 15% alum mordanted yarn. And on the right hand side 
5% alum mordanted yarn. And you may notice some discoloration in the uh, top and middle skeins, which are 5% alum. So I believe that this colour, it's possible that this colour is being preserved through the dyeing process and is, is adding a kind of um, a, a slightly muddy tone to the dye, uh, giving results uh, of a straw colour. Uh, I don't know, I can't prove that, but that seems a plausible hypothesis. And then we were also fortunately given a pH meter. So we tested the pH of the mordanting baths and the chart on the right shows you the corresponding pHs of each of those skeins. The reason the reasons there's a pair of each skeins is that one was mordanted for 30 minutes and one was mordanted for 60 minutes in each of the conditions. And you can see the longer mordanting darkened the samples the, the most at the 5% alum. But the pHs, to go back to those, uh, I find it really interesting that the pH of the mordant bath was pretty similar in the no cream of tartar and baking cream of tartar conditions but the dyer's cream of tartar brought the pH of those mordant baths down by two units on the pH scale more or less and that's a considerable improve, you know, increase in acidity and the book by Joy Boutrop and Catherine Ellis has a little explanation about what cream of tartar is doing and they suggest that it's protecting the wool and that it's the acidity that helps protect the wool. So perhaps by protect, they mean prevent it from discolouring. I, I don't know. Other books say it increases the uptake of the alum. I would love to know more about the chemistry of what's going on here. So finally, to conclude, we'd all like to use less alum uh, in order to um, make sure that we're not wasting any and the disposal issues are not there. So low alum is a good thing. Um, and we found out in this experiment that long, hot dye baths, even with low alum, will give you nice, strong colours. But our fading investigation showed that they will not be as colour fast. They will fade in sunlight. And they're also less likely to be those acid yellows, unless you're using dye's cream of tartar. So that, I think, is useful information for the craft dyer. To say it another way, if as a dyer you would like to achieve the acid yellows, try and keep the dye baths below 70 degrees or a, a centigrade or 160 Fahrenheit. Avoid cutting corners in your mordanting. Mordant for a nice long time and you'll get colour fast colours. And avoid using the baking cream of tartar. My advice would be leave that for the snickerdoodles which I understand is a very tasty North American treat that needs it, uh, or the muffins. If you want the straw yellows, however, you can drop the alum, or you could raise the dye bath temperature, or you could throw in baking cream of tartar, but I would prefer not to. And finally, we certainly now think that before committing to a project with an unfamiliar fleece, definitely check a sample to see if the fibre is going to discolour either on heating or on mordanting. And if it does, then try doing everything at a lower temperature. And if we were going to do some further experiments, which inspired by this conference, I have to say there's a good possibility we will. It would be great to explore the ripening of alum wool, where lots of books say leave it damp and unrinsed before dyeing. My anecdotal experience is that that does increase the intensity of the colours. And it'd be good to explore that properly. How long do you leave it? Uh, for example, and some people say leave it in a plastic. Don't leave it in a plastic bag. Does that matter? Does it have to breathe? Um, secondly, gosh, wouldn't it be fantastic to be able to analyse the yellows in the in the results spectrographically? Um, that would be a dream, but uh, I'm quite realistic about the fact that that's uh, probably not easily achievable. But if anybody has a project where you'd like to collaborate, just give us a shout. Um, but we would definitely like to know what's in baking cream of tartar. For example, are some brands better than others? Are there caking agents in there? Are there any preservatives? Is it even the potassium hydrogen tartrate that dyer's cream of tartar is? Is it something else that has the same effect in cooking? Um, maybe I should be buying my cream of tartar uh, from a chemical supplier or just from a slightly posher supermarket. Who knows? 
and just finally generally a big lesson for us is we just love to understand more about the plant dye chemistry of what's going on in our craft dyeing so thank you for listening if you need to contact us our website is naturesrainbow.co.uk and you can message either brian or ashley or myself through there or you might find us on social media i hope you enjoyed the talk we will be in this kiosk of the Biodyes conference uh, probably trying to be in between four and six in the afternoon london time plus one because we're still before the clocks change and uh, maybe talk to you then.